Sup guys and welcome to I love you Colonel Sanders Face <laughs> finger looking good dating simulator Oh god Out of all the games I choose to play I just want to say real quick I do apologize I haven't uploaded anything in the past couple days I've been extremely sick still pretty sick so i might sound a little rough while doing this and i just want to do something quick simple and easy for a quick video and of course i found this so i hope you do all do enjoy into your name Ooh. it's a tough one Sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through your window of your modest student apartment. I like the chicken poster. The world is peaceful and serene. You can stay in this moment forever. <coughs> or you could wake up now. 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 Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. God, this game is loud. I do like the music though. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School, Academy of Learning. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What will you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting away from you. Buy yourself the daydream. You take this, I mean, take this seriously, Daddy. I better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. You bust through your morning checklist: teeth brushed, hair combed, pits deodorized. Nothing can stop you now. Did you dust your balls? Confidently grab a biscuit, strut out the door, and head off to class. <laughs> Okay, just need to get your blood flowing, so you eat a KFC biscuit. Standing in the quad and gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School, the Academy of Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Maria. I I'm not going to try to pronounce your name, I'm just calling you uh, Ree. She's the most adorable, awkward person you've ever met, and you're absolutely loved by- Hang on, I need to turn down this volume. Alright. Good morning, Daddy. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? No, why not? Working for KFC every day. Actually, I'm- because I sure am excited. A little nervous. Okay, okay. A lot nervous. What's the... She just won't let me talk. She just keeps cutting me off. And now she's crying. It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself. But, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic re. Raised by Master Chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together, and you rescued me from that quicksand box. Quicksand box, was it? It's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. <laughs> but with the University of Cooking School Academy of Learnings, Famous three day only semesters. I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. But three days of school? A sweet girl Re has always had her a flair for the dramatic. This summer she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. 
Should I do prep talker or change the subject? Uh, you know what? School gossip. Yeah, let's hear about the gossip. It's hard to see Re like this, frankly. Quite exhausting. Rather than dwell on her anxiety, we try to change the subject to something more interesting. All summer, you've been hearing rumors about a dreamy, energetic, mysterious student who is enrolled at this school. Oh, I wonder who it could be. Yeah, there's a little worrisome, but you'll be fine. Now, what about this mysterious student we read about on the school message board? Any new deets? Uh -huh. Oh, get this. I heard his name is Harold. Harold, okay. And he's no ordinary student. They say he has powers. He's had them ever since he was born from an egg. God, I can't take this game seriously. An egg? Like a chicken? Don't be ridiculous. But the thing about having powers, it would line up with some of the other rumors I've heard. Like I've heard he once fought a bear with just a smile. We both sigh thinking about a student so handsome that the laws of physics don't dare apply to him dreamy. Before you can get another word out, you rudely interrupted by s when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands onto the ground. Hey. I think I have my favorite character. It's... Slay. Yeah, your name's Slay. I cannot pronounce that. Your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. With some curiosity. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. Ooh, yes, she can. Hello, Slay. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave daddy's shins out alone? <laughs> God, what I made myself. You leave daddy's shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins. Uh, you can't stand Slay. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add in extra letters to make herself feel better than ever. So your name's actually Ashley, but you decided to add the alphabet along with it, okay? If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not going to let you really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van, the man man. Stupid <laughs> game with these dumb things. Has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight that you can see his casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, the rock and glutes. Ahem, Van Van. Okay, this dude. This dude belongs in the JoJo universe. He looks awesome. You rang rang? Just look at this dude standing in his hair. He is awesome looking. Dude runs the school. You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van has been just as close as you and Ree, but substantially more devious. I can't believe the University of Cooking School Academy of Learning would ever allow people like you to attend the students. I know, right? You'd think they'd just hand us our diplomas now. Or maybe hire us as professionals. You amateurs couldn't learn a lot from us. Rude. With the first day of school about to start, there's just no time to properly tell these two off. So you resist the urge. Let's go, Ree. Uh. Shh. 
see you later, Lucy. I'm gonna. Hmm. I can't be mad at you, now, can I? Can't get too weird with this. <laughs> Who is this? As you approach the door, you see a goofy looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. Pop. <laughs> what are you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oops. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I loved you. I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. So what, his name is just Pop with an extra pop to it? Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, I'm name tagging. Clearly says Bob. But I guess he's reading it upside down. Oh, I'm playing with Kyle. He's dyslexic. I'm gonna call you Kyle. Hi, Kyle. I'm daddy, so... Are you going to make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Aww. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? You have very strange taste in men. I think it's just you. It's, it's really just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, Unsure where to sit, other students wander in and keep themselves busy by chit-chatting. This scruffy-looking pooch takes his place as- Oh, our teacher's a dog? That's- Place at the podium at the front of the class. Adorable. Look at him. And he's on a marble pillar. Now, now. Sprinkles is his name. Now, now. Quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? He must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Oh, look at him. He's sitting up. Please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuisance of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossoms. Petals fill the air inside the classroom. I'm chilly, someone closes the window. Shut up, Kyle. And then... He walks in. Oh, it's Daddy Colonel. You're immediately swept up by the aura of the new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. <gasps> it's him. It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harold. Stupid game. <laughs> Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog. Before he can finish his sentence, please call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. A, hus a hushed murmur rolls through the classroom. As Colonel Sanders walks down the aisles of death, suddenly the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to bead across your brow. You feel like everybody is looking at you and you're not entirely wrong. Oh. And this over here must be a sweaty sweat a lot. Ashley, you need to shut up. I'm on. This dude, this JoJo dude, he's gonna be my best friend at the end of this. He won't want nothing to do with you. 
Maybe we should open the window back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle of it. I'm gonna slap you with a frying pan or something at some point. Put that tongue back in your mouth. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class, and what is with all your really weird insults? You take a moment to clean yourself up. It's a good thing you didn't forget about the deodorant this morning. This classroom is hot, hot, hot. You know, what is that picture up there by the clock? Who is that? Professor Dog stepped into the Settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legend, past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears, there will be blood, there might even be really adorable tiny food. Hang on, it is, what time is it on the clock? School should be almost over. Wait, no, we're in college, never mind. And when all is said and done, there'll be a battle, a food battle. You'll be lift your forks and complete in the romaine cooking area. Can you not use so big words and quit looking mean at me like this? I have sharp reading, you should know this. Just then, another student enters the classroom, interrupts the professor's arousing speech. This dude's just name is Student. He looks like a me character. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everybody had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Late the class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue, we're on the fast track out of here. Young man, are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. You fail every time. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I'm finished. Damn, he's so angry. He's so mad. Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling how halfway across town on his tiny wheels. Who's Clank? I want to figure out who Clank is now. Return to see the student Sprinkles is referring to who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. Okay, discount Wally. The class burst into laughter. Has <laughs> he got an ice cream machine up there? Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everybody stands silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts up his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need... A multivitamin, you should be taking better care. I know all I'm eating is KFC biscuits in the morning. You never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkles' reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? No, you can never go wrong with a chicken stack. You reach beneath your apron and return the chicken snack in hand. Sprinkles' eyes go wide and lock in onto it. His favorite. See, like I said, never go wrong with chicken. Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for a new star student. Now, why did I have dog treats on me in the first place? The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. When you see the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay no mind to them, if they want to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on the metal times. Word life lesson, but alright. 
Sit down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds opened to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you are left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Daddy, there's a seat still here. It seems that no one has claimed the seat next to me if you're interested. You know, I'm surprised nobody sat next to Colonel here. But you know, I don't want to sit next to my best friend. But I mean, it's Daddy Sanders. Though. I'll sit to my friend. Move to take your seat by Re. I'm so glad to have you near me to support me through this class. Of course, you're my best friend. Who else would I sit by? Colonel Sanders. He has such a magnetic personality and there's a seat open right next to him. If you had sat there, you might have gotten to know him a little better. Yeah, I could have. I could have. I thought about it. I figured you'd be a little too distracting in class, though, because, I mean, I've never sacrificed our friendship sides. I'm sure I'll get a chance to talk to them later in the semester. I've got three whole days. That's like a lifetime. Wait, there's only three days of the semester? So you say, but now that Maria mentions it, the Colonel Sanders is just so darn dreamy. Yeah, I, I agree. As soon as you settle down, into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. Yay, a quiz about Kyle, be quiet, you're dyslexic, you're Bob. The incredible importance of prize short quiz will tell me if you are ready for a life of culinary school. Okay, give it to me. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question one. If train A is traveling to tr point B in train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extremely looking at you, Pop. That's right. Okay. Forest is to tree as chicken is to light vision goggles? Flame feather? That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A comically oversized fork. That's wrong. What food is best for a broken heart? Oh, well, that's easy. Uh, anything as long as it's prepared with love. Camel meat? A pancake that looks like a silly face. I'm stuck between camel meat and a pancake. Okay, pancake is wrong. It sprinkles a good boy. That is right. All right, your total score is three out of five. It's not perfect score, but at least it's not a complete and utter embarrassment. You catch Colonel Sam Sanders eyeballing your answers. His reaction is hard to read. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Of course, that's a personal and a very important announcement. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone can I have your attention? Student and Kyle. Does all this dude ever do is eat? Cause look, mustard there, mustard there, juice box, probably vodka there, paper bag. No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was. Howdy, folks. I like to make an announcement. Okay. Okay. Student, be quiet. Daddy Sanders is talking now. Hey, I was. 
It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I, shush. Lunch, lunch, lunch. Can you all just stop one person talk at a time? There doesn't need to be everybody's dialogue going off at once. She said, shush. In honor of the new semester, I prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell? You'll hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he has very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this? Colonel Sanders left a huge, large bucket above his head. It contains glimmer in the light. Contents, not contains, need to learn to read. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crisp golden finish. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken. What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble as you say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I had been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. But my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that everyone, other students, has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. That's all I'll say about that. Will you think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Sound of ocean. Nah, my dude, nah. I'm just uh, drafting a last will and testament in case uh, one of those ingredients is uh, poison. Got it? He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. Look at face. Wait to see that Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smell something beautiful. I knew at the moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see, her body language changed from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She's realized that he is destined for greatness. And fame with cooking skills like this. She wants them all to herself. Mm. Oh, please. Mm. Well, Van Van, the man man, if you don't want any, I'll take this. Well, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wild. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act I'm unimpressed. Easy now, there's enough for everyone. Please follow. <laughs> My fellow classmates dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of the bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Savor the moment everything tells you the Colonel Sanders' culinary art. The flavors in your mouth is beautiful. You're heavenly. What a guy. Alone with flavors, you feel something that can only describe as love. For a man, for a flavor, are they the same? After tasting his food, try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? 
How bold of you to come out and ask. It's an idea I had a few come a new combination of flavors that will make me a fortune and establish my legacy for all times. I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants, no big deal. It's just you and me you're talking, I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I like to be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give up it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to persist. Darn, I'm, I'm rough with words. Know what to say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You got Moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. There's one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use what white rectangular shape. It's something my great grandmother taught me. Wow, you never have guessed that. In fact, you're never even sure where you get some if you're searched. While you're wrapped up in the huge revelation and you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared while everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. Find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. What am I doing? Stalking this dude now? Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare to say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Be modest and thoughtful. Wow him with a big idea to add additional ingredients to re rely spice things up. Nag him to show your own strength. You know, be modest and thoughtful. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex, but confronting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery. It was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Daddy. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should hold back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven, and all the tools and ingredients they could get, need. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally. We get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh no, we have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You know, I think I think you'll do fine. I mean, if your parents are five star chefs, then you you should be doing fine. You're not going to blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Sprinkle showed up. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Ree looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on the <laughs> Colonel Sanders. <laughs> hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? Team of two? That is, is me and you? If that wasn't clear? Want to be my partner? Sure, Daddy, I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Re is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. Really, the kitchen utensil and... Pop. Beep boop. I feel bad for her now. Oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask Ree's partner? 
You know what? I would like clank because I'm afraid that Pop just going to eat all the food as soon as she gets done cooking it. Not even done cooking it. He's just going to eat all the materials raw. Sorry, Pop, but I think Re will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay. I already ate. See? Right there. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school is school even is at this juncture Clink is clearly excited to have some attention he heats up and begins to roll back and forth good statement hold on there fella we don't even know the assignment yet technically Clink might not have a face but there's something charming and earnest about him tissue I hardly know you. What's with the dumb jokes already? Clank judders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two, for today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and dive in, divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Uh, steak is easy enough. It's fancy. Octopus, you know, it. we'll do mashed potatoes and gravy. I've always been something of a down home chef. I think we could make something warm, inviting, and comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. <gasps> And gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to get beat red and pierced. Quickly turn away. I seriously. Out of all the games I could have chosen to play, I play this. Okay. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please. Let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business. And you better keep your fingers off my man. I don't know who you're talking to, lady. We're about to have a fight now. Did somebody call for me? Okay, hopefully not copyrighted music. Uh, no G's, Van Van. I'm over here crushing daddy's dreams. You, you're supposed to be taking care of the classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them in the boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley and Van Van. Are we working a ordered instead of a duet now oh. actually no I looked and looked like daddy was struggling so we offered to give them a hand you know how it is these young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring I was going to say Colonel Sanders maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food maybe one day might be able to get up to my level doubt it oh. don't be rude man man Seriously, can't take this game. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Carl Sanders' ability to con concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing really about the fight you know that that uh, has positioned itself in your station you know what he was free at the time why didn't you go over here and take him but no, look at him he's bad he's tell her off don't you feel deep down that we cast complete com complementary shadows we fit together like a the high end of drumstick it just makes sense nothing about this makes any sense but one thing is clear she's coming for colonel and you don't 
if you don't watch it. Why do I have to pick a game that requires reading? Ashley is really good at going at your you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before he things up. Turn to Colonel Sanders. Hunk of hunks in your time of need. Forever bestie who always has your back. Let's, let's do Colonel Sanders. I'm here to learn and express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with primed dozens. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? Return to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders and Colonel Sanders chose me, isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements from contracts the handshakes i took on daddy as my partner this activity and i stand by it based on your team's behavior i'd say you prefer perfect per you're perfect for each other neither of you as daddy's natural talent and their loyalty god i need to get to sleep soon it's like four in the morning and i'm doing this and like i said i've been sick being defeated by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for Sprinkles in hopes he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. There are those cute corgis in their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that in tension of the moment your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiling potatoes into a perfect creamy mash texture of plenty of butter or creamy cream for flavor it says if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere I know just what to do Colonel Sanders extends his hand he's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth brown gravy smothering your nearly finished potato dish gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes that results look spectacular granny would be very proud one heck of a potato dish colonel sanders holds the spork out to you you reach out and hold it but he doesn't immediately let go the two of you stand holding the same spork and for the small moment, all the madness and pressure in the crazy world stops. Ooh, he's even winking on me. Things are trying to get a little spicy. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. <laughs> I hate this game. Together, you dig the utensils into the mashed potatoes lift, and lift a heaping spork full up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then filled with rage without thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right in Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. <laughs> man, man, do something. Do something. Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with such, so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, daddy. <laughs> I can't stand this game. <laughs> of course I chose the dumbest thing. <laughs> we do not waste food. In the roommate cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have can I has potatoes face? Bam Bam rushed back over. A covered dish in his hand. Mash it's not a freaking axe. Mashed potatoes with gravy, pathetic, in just a few minutes. I prepared a full meal, glaze, gaze upon my spectacular brazen 
brace tentacle of octopus and my silky saltwater sauce place it on a battle axe blade forged in my supreme chef ancestors <laughs> you've ignored me for too long that means now it is I who will have the first bite and you will all look on with envy the interrupting students rush at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Dog was dying over there now. Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned it into the process. The results could be toxic. Too late, he has been eaten. I uh, think I left something in the stove. <laughs> What, we're just poisoning people now? It, they turned into a freaking ghost! They just turned into a ghost on the spot. Everyone step back. Take another... Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of, the, of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. What is Pop made out of? Tastes like poison? Dude has an iron stomach. The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. Class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to the reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has incloated him against the poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here have enough money. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. That's funny, dude. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. Ooh. Ghost of a student. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. Followed Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the colonel, the school building has taken another vibe. Entirely, it's dark. And more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad in the young glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skill. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Carl Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Carl Sanders? Yes. Daddy? There's something I need to tell you. Hold it right there. Come on, Van Van. It was... There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream. That one day I'd be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working toward that dream day and night. Never stopping, never resting. Also, lifting a lot of weights. Like so many weights. Until We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts. That our soul may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ugh. Hey, no, I, you. Oh, he screwed up his hair. His hair is actually cool. Shut up. I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. I'm forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy. You can't prove that. Actually, I do. I can. I got it all on recording. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. Yeah. The sp 
sport monster here to fight a hero. What the? What is? The, what is the turn? I don't understand. I I think I left the fridge door open later, nerds. I don't understand how I just turned straight to this. How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level? Be afraid, be very afraid of me because I'm a monster, see? Is he rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss Synax any further, as a turn based fight sequence, what will you do? I attack. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. Attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Uh, I, I guess I'll defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure you can do it. Spirit Monster focus their mass mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grew larger and more intimidating. Mean, how will you respond? Uh, another defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Buffed up. You draw energy into your arms. Thinking back on all the stirring you did in the kitchen as a child. Your muscles grow super swole and you're ready to take on anything. Spork monsters, no quitter, buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. Spork monster uses Utili Utensil, whatever that word is, you take two damage from that attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Attack. Uh, chow down. Chowdown does two damage. Powerful blow. Spork monsters oozing cheese sauce on the lawn with the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork monster prepares its ultimate attack. Round edge. Vile villain. Your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens. <laughs> Pot pie power pinch. Pop by power pinch does 10 damage. Spork monster is defeated. You saved me. What is this, this game? An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. Uh, forget mercy, finish him. No student will ever walk the quantum fear again. The monster messed with the wrong chef. Ready your final attack. You'll never survive my student death loan destruction. <laughs> Spork monster is completely vaporized. Colonel Sanders looks in awe. You continue to surprise me, daddy. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it is so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last thing to have signed it signed it out is Boroko. Boroko, that name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, the darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must, must have helped you get home in your tired state. You don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, together with Colonel Sanders, for some reason, Sprinkles is also there. Instructing your love dreams are weird. 
You get even the ghost kid going on through. You awake on day two. Attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. All right, I am going to go ahead and end this here. This is, it is quite a pretty long video. I don't know. I might not come back and finish this. I don't know. It was kind of a weird game. Somewhat enjoyable. But, you know, you guys, for some reason like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.